So there are quite a few ceiling fan installation videos already out there, but in my opinion, a lot of them are missing some very important steps and also some crucial mistakes that a lot of DIYers make when installing these ceiling fans. So in this video, I'm gonna cover all of that. I'm gonna show you how easy and quick this is to do. And we're also gonna to touch on some of those safety hazards as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I've already removed my old light fixture. It was one of these right here. And the reason why I went ahead and just skipped through removing that is because everybody's situation and fixture is gonna be different. But for the most part, you're gonna be looking for some common things in order to take it down. You're gonna be looking for some exposed screws in order to take it down. Usually the cover will come off first and then underneath of the cover where the actual lighting is, you'll have bolts coming through and you'll see some more screws or some decorative screws like this that just need to be be removed and that will then separate your old light fixture from the bracket that's up in the box. Now when it comes to any electrical but when we're installing a new light fixture you want to make sure that you have no power going to this box. So at a minimum you want to make sure that the light switches are off. With the light switches off power should not be able to pass on to these wires but of course it's always safer to actually turn off the circuit breaker that's sending power to the light switches that then send the power to the light box that you're going to be working on. And then once the light switch and or circuit breaker is off, you always want to test your wires to make sure that there is in fact no power going to them. So now I need to install my ceiling fan bracket. And what's interesting about this is it has this big hook on here. And that's going to come in handy on the next step because it's going to make things a whole lot easier than they used to be. But if you see this notch out here and this notch out here, this is where those bolts that are already in the box are gonna slide into each one of these holes. Then once the wiring and bolts are through their designated places and we slide it into place, then we can tighten down the bolts into the light box. All right, so now we're ready to mount our fan motor assembly. And as you can see up here at the top of the brackets, we've got four screws. And if you see this little slit right here, that's where we're gonna put that little hook into to hold this into place to just make installing this and wiring it up a whole lot easier. And since it's on that hook, it also makes it very easy to swivel up into place and then tighten down those four screws into the ceiling fan bracket. All right, so this is where we start wiring our fan to the wires coming out of the box in the ceiling. As you can see, the wires I have coming out of the box in the ceiling are a white neutral, I've got a red wire, a bare copper ground, and then a black wire. My black wire and my red wires are both going to be hot wires. And usually when you see this, and in this case, they are going to separate switches. That's how we're gonna be able to operate the fan lights and the fan itself on two separate switches. But a lot of you will only have the black wire, a ground wire, and then the white neutral wire, and I'll show you exactly how to install it either way. But this particular installation is one where I actually do prefer to use the Wago lever nuts. They're incredibly quick and easy to install. You can make sure that you have good connections. They are more than capable of handling the amps that are gonna be used in order to power this fan. Now this particular one is capable of handling three wires, but since in my installation, I'm only gonna be connecting one wire to one wire, I actually prefer these inline splices. These are also Wago 221 lever connectors, but they're just an inline splice. But the way that these work is you just lift up these levers on either side. You then insert the wires into the ports on the bottom. And once the wires are inserted into those ports, then you just flip those levers down and then the wires will be connected and locked into place. All right, so I've already shown you I've got a ground wire, a black, a red, and a white neutral wire coming out of the ceiling, but then the fan comes with four different colored wires as well. We've got a green wire, a white wire, a black wire, and instead of red, the differing color is blue. So we know that the green wire is gonna get connected to the ground. We know that the white wire is gonna get connected to the white neutral, but how do we know whether to hook up the black or the red wire coming out of the ceiling to the black or the blue wire that's on the fan? And that's gonna completely come down to whoever wired up your house as to which switches these go to. So you may prefer, and in my case, I prefer for the switch on my left to operate the lights and the switch on the right to operate my fan. Well, in order to figure out which is which, I'm gonna to have to have the circuit breaker on and I'm gonna to have to turn on one of the switches and test to see whether the black or the red wire is supplying the power that I want going to my lights, which is the left switch. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn the circuit breaker back on 
and then flip on the left switch that I want to operate my lights. So I'm gonna take a non-contact voltage detector and check each wire. Checking the black wire, and I'm not showing that there's any voltage there. Check the red, and as you can see, the red wire is showing that it's carrying voltage. So now I know that my left switch that I wanna operate my lights is on the left because this red wire is what is showing the voltage. Now another way you can go about doing this is instead of turning on your circuit breaker again or just flipping the light switch to then check with a voltage detector, you can just take the trim plate off of where your switches are, look inside and see which color wire is connected to whichever switch that you're looking for. So as you can hopefully see here on the left, there's a little bit of paint on the wires, but towards the back, you can see that there is a red wire on my left switch. So this is of course another option to figure out which wire is which. All right, so now I wanna make sure that I turn my light switch back off. And of course, to always be safer, you can turn off the circuit breaker again. And check again to make sure I don't have any voltage. All right, so let's go ahead and start wiring up our wires. And I'm gonna start off with this bare copper wire, and that's gonna get connected to this green wire that's going to the ceiling fan. I'm gonna open up one of the levers on the lever connector. I'm just gonna insert that ground wire into that WAGO connector, flip it over to the bottom, we can clearly see that we've got copper seated all the way up at the top. So now that we've seen that, we can now flip the lever down and now that's locked into place. Now I'll flip up the lever on the other side, take my green ground wire, put that into the other side of the inline connector. And once we verify that it's seated, we see that it's all the way up at the top. We see a little bit of the wiring down below the bus bar there. Once we verified that, now we can flip down that lever. And now these grounds are connected together. All right, so now I'm gonna take my white neutral wire. I'm gonna take the white neutral wire coming from the fan. We're gonna connect those together, flip up the other lever on the other side, and then insert it into the other side of the inline connector, and then flip down that lever. And now our neutral wires are connected. All right, so now this is where it gets a little bit more confusing and where there will be a couple of different installation choices. Over here on the fan side, we have a black wire and a blue wire. Now, for those of you that do not have a black and a red wire and you're not planning on operating your fan and your lights separately on two different switches, and in that case, let's ignore that the red wire even exists and what switch it goes to, you know that the black wire is the only hot wire that's gonna be coming in from the lone light switch, which means you'll be operating the fan using the pole chains. And in this case, you don't really need to worry between the black and the blue wire as to where they get connected. They will both be getting connected to that lone hot wire coming in. So in that case, you would just take the blue and the black wire and the black wire coming out of the ceiling, put them all together. You can use a wire nut to do this in order to twist them all together. Or again, you could use this three port WAGO and just use the levers like we have with the inline splices. So super easy for those of you that just have the one hot wire coming in. But for those of us with two wires and wanting to operate them independently, we know what these two wires do. Now we need to know what do these two wires going to the fan do. And in this case, the blue wire is what operates the lights and the black wire is what operates the fan. And you should be able to find this in the instructions that are included with your fan. And I highly encourage you, don't just watch a video, follow each of the directions in the instructions that are included with the fan to make sure that you are doing everything properly. All right, so the black wire operates the fan. The black wire coming out of the ceiling is the switch on my right, which I want to operate the fan. So we're gonna connect, in this case, the black wire to the black wire. Now take the black wire coming from the fan, insert it into the other side of the inline splice, flip that down. Now our black wires that operate the fan are connected. And so last but not least, we're gonna take our red wire that's coming out of the ceiling, put it into our WAGO inline connector, flip down the lever, take the blue wire coming from the fan, put it into the other side of the WAGO, and then flip down that lever as well. All right, so now all of our wiring is connected together, and this is where a lot of DIYers go wrong. They will just leave their splice points just like this, sitting in here in the fan assembly itself. It just looks natural, it fits well, 
but unfortunately this is not to code and it could create a dangerous situation in the future. So the next step that needs to be taken is we can't just leave our splice points sitting out here underneath of the fan assembly. We actually need to insert them all through the center hole in the fan mounting bracket and up into the electrical box in the ceiling. All splice points must be contained in an approved electrical box. And if you do end up using the Wagos or any other lever nut for that matter, in electrical projects, always make sure when pushing them into the box to be very careful when inserting them into the box so that none of the levers catch on a wire or on the fixture or on the box itself, possibly lifting up the levers enough to where one of the wires could come out. All right, so now all of my wiring is connected and it is now properly placed up inside of the electrical box. All right, so the next step is gonna be installing this fan base shroud or, or this decorative cover. And as you can see, we've got a hole up here and then we've got a hole, but it's notched out up at the top. And the same thing is the case on the other side as well. That is because on each side of the bracket, as you can see, there's a screw over here on the left and a screw over here on the right. That is the case for the other side as well. We're gonna need to remove the right screw as you're facing it on each side of the bracket. And then the left screw on each side of the bracket just needs to be loosened. All right, so now those two right screws are removed and the left screws are loosened. I'll take the decorative cover, slide those screw heads into those notches. And then once they're in those notches, I'll just turn the cover just slightly and now it will hold into place. And now at this point, I can now take those screws that I took out and now reinsert them through those holes, tighten those down, and then tighten down the two screws and the notches. All right, so the next step is to install these blade brackets. Obviously, this is what the fan blades will get connected to, but we need to connect the base of these with these screws to the fan motor itself. So we're gonna take each one of those fan brackets one by one and attach them with each screw into both of those holes. And in this case, this fan has five blades, so we need to attach five of these fan brackets. Now, one thing I do encourage if you're planning on using an impact is I would use a screwdriver to get these screws started. It would be really easy to use the impact, try to start screwing them in there, and you may end up cross-threading the screws because you can't exactly get on them at a perfectly straight angle. All right, so now that we got the fan blade mounts all mounted, now it's time to actually install the fan blades themselves. And these fan blades have come a long way in terms of installing them as opposed to a few years ago. Well, now these fan blades just snap into place. If you look up here at the top of the fan blade mounts, you'll see these rubber grommets that are all screwed down into the fan blade mounts. And then over here, you see this metal tab that is then what will lock it into place. You take those three rubber posts and you insert them through the fan blade like so, and then you just pull towards you or away from the fan. And now this fan blade is locked into place. So now we just need to do the same thing with the four remaining fan blades. Insert those rubber posts on top of the fan blade mount through the holes on the fan blades, pull them out and away from the fan and lock them all into place. All right, so now all the fan blades are attached and that one is backwards. And this is a perfect example of everyone makes mistakes. I was paying too close of attention to the camera to make sure that it was still focused and then realized that one of these was upside down. But in this case, like so many others, it's a super easy fix, but a really great reminder to always double check your work. So now this is where we can now attach our light fixture. And this is super easy to do. I'll just take the white wire coming out of the fan Take the white wire coming from the light fixture, slide them together using those quick connects. So now those are connected and I'll do the same thing with the blue wire. Blue wire to blue wire, slide in the quick connects. All right, so now we can take the light fixture, take all of the wiring, push it up inside of the fan housing. And then there are three holes all the way around the fan here. And there are also three threaded holes inside the light fixture that we just inserted into the fan that then screws get tightened down into. Now we can take our decorative light covers and install them on each of the light bulb sockets. Now they are super easy to install. You just push them in and then it's about a quarter turn clockwise and they'll lock into place. Now those are installed. Now we can just install our light bulbs, which pretty much everybody knows how to do. You just turn them in clockwise until they get tight. And now at this point, the fan is installed. So if you turned off the circuit breaker, you can now turn the circuit breaker back on. All right, so now it's time to test this out. So we wanted the lights to be operated by this left switch. So we'll turn that on. As you can see, the lights came on but the fan is not spinning. 
So in order to get the fan going, this right switch should turn on the fan. So we'll flip that on. And as you can see, the fan is now spinning. So now we know everything was installed and wired up properly. Now, if you found this fan installation video to be interesting, I did a video quite a while ago where I installed a smart fan switch. So not only am I able to control my fan using my phone, more importantly, I'm able to set schedules so that my fan turns on and off automatically all throughout the week. So I don't have to worry about turning it on at night or off in the morning or whenever you wanna use your fan, you can just set up schedules and it'll take care of all of it for you. If you're interested in that, I'll post a link to that video right over here. But if you'd be more interested in a video that I did recently where I show how to make better electrical connections, I'll post that link right down here. So I hope that you found this to be interesting and helpful. And if you did, if you could just do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.